friends welcome to edupediaworld.com today we will discuss about the basic structural and functional unit of life the cell by me vomika soni hope you will enjoy it what is a cell it is the basic structural and functional unit of life it is the fundamental structural and functional unit of all the living organisms cells are very small and can be visualized only by using a microscope what does the basic structural and functional unit of life actually means living things share certain characteristics they can take in nutrition reproduce grow and utilize energy as well as respond and adapt to their environment the instructions for these activities reside inside the cell all the living organisms are composed of cells the living things are made up of many many cells cells are of different shapes and sizes they possess different functions like red blood cell white blood cell epithelial cell nerve cell mesophyll cell and many more although all these cells have different forms but every cell has the same basic part like membrane in which resides the cytoplasm and nucleus in the cytoplasm reside the nucleus nucleus as a cell organelle was first described by robert brown nucleus is covered by a nuclear envelope comprising of two parallel membranes with perinuclear space nuclear envelope forms the barrier between the material present in the nucleus and that of the cytoplasm the nuclear pores present on the envelope acts as a passage for the movement of protein and rna in both directions some mature cells lack nucleus example erythrocytes and sieve tube cells of vascular plants the nuclear matrix or nucleoplasm contains nucleolus and chromatin the interface nucleus means the nucleus of the cell which is not dividing contains chromatin chromatin are highly extended and elaborate nuclear protein they appear during interface when the cell is not dividing chromatin contains dna and some basic proteins called histones some non histone proteins and also rna when the cell starts dividing several transition takes place chromatin condenses to form chromosome each chromosome has a constriction point called the centromere which divides the chromosome into two arms look at the image the short arm of the chromosome is labeled as the p arm and the long arm as q arm the location of the centromere on each chromosome gives the chromosome its characteristic shape centromere can be used to describe the location of specific gene on the side of centromere 
lies the disc shaped structure called the kinetochores. Based on the position of centromere, the chromosome can be classified into four types metacentric, which has a middle centromere forming two equal arms of the chromosome, submetacentric, which has the centromere nearer to one end of the chromosome, resulting into one shorter arm and one longer arm. Acrocentric chromosome has centromere situated close to its end, forming one extremely short and one very long arm. The telocentric chromosome has a terminal centromere. Sometimes a few chromosomes have a non-staining secondary constriction at a constant location. This gives appearance of a small fragment called satellite. In humans, each cell normally contains 23 pairs of chromosomes and total 46 chromosomes. 22 of these pairs are called autosomes, which looks same both in males and females. 23rd pair, the sex chromosomes differ between males and females. Males have one X and one Y chromosome, whereas female possess two copies of the X chromosome. This picture of the human chromosome lined up in pairs is called a karyotype. DNA deoxyribonucleic acid is the hereditary material in humans and almost in all the other organisms. Nearly every cell in the person's body has the same DNA. Most DNA is located in the cell nucleus where it is called the nuclear DNA. But a small amount of DNA can also be found in the mitochondria where it is called the mitochondrial DNA. Deoxyribonucleic acid is comprised of 3 billion bases and more than 99% of those bases are same in all people. DNA bases pair up with each other. The bases present in DNA are adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. The information in DNA is stored in these bases. The base pairing occurs between the adenine and thymine with two hydrogen bonds whereas between cytosine and guanine with three hydrogen bonds. Each base pair is also attached to the sugar molecule and a phosphate molecule. Together, base, sugar and phosphate are called as nucleotide. The nucleotides are arranged in two long strands that form a spiral called a double helix. The unique structure of chromosome keeps the DNA tightly wrapped around the histone proteins. A very important property of DNA is that it can replicate or make copies of itself. This is critical when cell divides because each new cell needs to have an exact copy of DNA present in the old cell. Gene. Gene is basically a stretch of DNA. It is the basic physical and functional unit of heredity. Genes are made up of DNA. Each chromosome contains many genes. In the Human Genome Project, 
it has been estimated that humans have between 20,000 to 25,000 genes. Every person has two copies of each gene, one inherited from each parent. Less than 1% of genes are slightly different in people, rest are same. These small differences contribute to each person's unique physical features. Genes makes protein using base pairs of the DNA as genetic codes. The order of bases in the DNA along with the length of sequence of the gene determines the size and shape of the protein. The size and shape of the protein determine the functions of the organs of the body. Protein makes up cells. Cells make up tissues. Tissues make up organs like your nose, your eyes. Genes determine what you are. A dog, a banana, a panda or a human. The color of your hair, skin and other characteristics are determined by genes. So, on a concluding note, cells from comprising of nucleus contains chromatin at interface. Chromatin condenses to form chromosome during cell division. Chromosome contains DNA tightly wrapped around histone proteins. Genes are stretch of DNA which makes proteins using base pair of DNA as a genetic code. So here we end our today's lecture. Hope you have understood each and every term. In the coming lecture we will discuss about cell division. Thank you and have a nice day.